The AI gold rush is over, and if you're still trying to sell simple chatbots and basic automations, you're about to learn this the hard way. Six months ago, you could throw together any custom GPT, call it an AI solution, and charge $5,000, but those days are long gone. The market has evolved, and buyers have gotten more sophisticated. The agencies still playing the old game are going to get absolutely crushed. But here's the thing, this isn't necessarily bad news. It's the best thing that could happen if you're a serious AI entrepreneur. Because while everyone else is confused about why their $2,000 chatbots aren't selling, the agencies that understand what I'm about to show you are quietly building $50,000 infrastructure deals. So this is what I mean by the gold rush is over. The infrastructure age is what we're entering. The AI operating system age. And I'm about to show you exactly what this means. There's no such thing as easy money anymore. Let me paint you a picture of what just happened to our industry. 2023 was the gold rush, ChatGPT exploded, everybody wanted to buy AI, you could basically build a customer service bot in a weekend and sell it for $5,000. And I know because you know I did this, I sold a bunch of one-off projects just like this multiple times. But what happens is, you know, January 2024, clients started asking, you know, what makes your system better than, you know, this other system that I found. March 2024, oh, your clients are saying, we already tried all these AI tools, they're not really working. June 2024, clients are saying we don't need just another AI automation. And today, clients are asking for business outcomes, not just tools. So the market educated itself at warp speed. And what worked 12 months ago is now table stakes. If you're still pitching simple AI tools, you're competing with $20 a month SaaS products and offshore developers. So the gold rush attracted thousands, even millions of AI builders and agency, you know, wannabes. But the only ones, the ones that evolve will understand what shift is happening and will position themselves at the leading edge rather than trying to build outdated system. So what has replaced this gold rush? This is the infrastructure age. So the gold rush era was build fast, sell faster, single point workflows, like single use case workflows, you know, two to 5k price points, any business would buy them. The infrastructure age is strategic planning, comprehensive systems, outcome first pitches, and 15,000 to $50,000 lifetime value deals. And so this is only for the sophisticated buyers that are actually like, they, they need to see the real value. They want to see what it actually gets them, not just how cool it looks. So this is what we can think about in terms of the timeline, right? We're in the infrastructure age, and this is where buyers are asking harder questions. Competition is flooding the market. And so all of the kind of beginner level, beginner level AI agency owners are just in a race to the bottom. And they're trying to sell and compete with what is going to be like open AI is releasing AI agent systems. There's, there's, you know, hundreds of different AI agent tools now. And if you're set on the tools, if you're set on being technical, you're going to lose because you're not focused on the outcomes, you're focused on the features. What you need to be is focused on the outcomes, focus on the systems, the processes, focus on these high LTV deals rather than these, you know, one-off projects. And this is how you become a strategic builder. This is the infrastructure age, which you could say it's the new gold rush, the kind of simple AI system sell for $5,000 age. That gold rush is long gone, but the infrastructure age is where you can make 10 times as much money because now that the tools and the features are maturing a bit, so you can build more complete AI infrastructure and AI systems that can accomplish larger goals, right? So your goal now shouldn't just be build the one use case agent in a weekend. It should be understand an, inter an industry deeply enough with, you know, the ability to create complete systems that basically automate entire departments within companies. This will attract more sophisticated buyers and your pitch will be focused way more on the outcome and less on how cool, you know, your your tool is, right? Because it's not about building fast single use case solutions for any business. It's about having hyper specific markets, hyper specific offers with very large transformation and outcomes with as little risk as possible. So this is what it looks like, you know systems, outcomes, integrated infrastructure, and it might take you two months, three months to implement it. It might be an entire customer success op operating system for their business, an entire marketing operating system. You're basically getting them from where they are now to a successful, you know, marketing KPIs or sales KPIs or whatever it is. 
And this is where the industry is going. So if you look at con product comparisons, think about a customer success operating system. You'll predict when will churn happen. You completely automate their onboarding. You'll give them a health score on each client. You know, you'll give them dashboards on this stuff and they'll pr you'll price it at 15K a month because you're basically operating their entire customer success team versus, you know, the Gold Rush product. It's a customer service bot that they put on their website. It has a pretty basic website integration. It saves them a couple hours a week. You charge them five grand, three grand, whatever. And this is not, this is a thing of the past, right? And so we're talking about operating systems, about infrastructure, about entire, like you're, you're creating, you know, 10 AI workflows and agents that all accomplish one goal. And when they're integrated together, the amount that they can automate is 10 X what a single use case, one-time build, you know, workflow would accomplish. So the new requirement is that you focus on system architecture, on the data later, on making it scalable and enterprise ready, or at least medium to large business ready. You're focused on scaling these companies, lowering their customer acquisition costs. You know, there's a bunch of different KPIs that you can optimize for, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's about building, you know, architecting entire systems and, you know, more complex automations, not just the single use case things. And so it's not only like you're going to automate their customer service, you know, bot or something. It's going to be, you know, we're going to do, you're going to do 40 hours of research, research and understand the buyer so personally, they feel stupid saying no, because you understand their pain points better than anyone else. You're giving them the operating system. You're giving them the outcomes. You're even guaranteeing these outcomes. And because you know that your system is so good, you're not just automating a part of their business, you're transforming their business into an AI ultimately where it comes down to. You're reducing time to hire, increasing leads or pipeline velocity, cutting acquisition costs, getting them leads for cheaper, scaling operations, scaling customer onboarding, right? And you need all of these things in your architecture to do so. So how do we think about the strategic framework here? This is what it think, this is how you need to think about it. You start with the infrastructure play, you know, you are thinking RevOps, talent, customer success, what part of their business do you want to build infrastructure for? You could eventually, you know, build infrastructure for multiple different parts of their business, but you're designing this for the outcomes, right? Maybe you're doing interviews with different people in their company so that you deeply understand how their current processes work, what the outcomes are. And then you're, you're building out this infrastructure that essentially allows you to reliably scale that part of their business and you're pricing it based on the value such that like, okay, it's going to be a hundred K, but you're charging 10 K per month for 12 months. You're not going to charge a hundred K up front, but you could charge, you know, five, five to five K to 10 K per month for, and then, you know, either you do like a minimum of three months or you just make your product so good that they don't churn that the average, you know, customer saves for 12 months. That means that the deal size is, you know, 60 to 120 K Per client that's the lifetime value right and so this is how you need to start you need to you know choose your core function that you want to operate that you want to automate and build an infrastructure for here are the most common ones add add sales in there as well and then once you have all of these then i can't with my mouse all right so then we're gonna add sales in here as well so we have sales talent acquisition oops talent acquisition sales etc so the next thing is deep market research. Now you're going to interview these people. You're going to create these offers. You're going to deeply understand this market. Then you're going to design the system, but you don't want to take too much time. You want to understand how the system will work and how it will help them reach the goals. Then you want to sell it. And then once you get a client, you're going to build out, you know, a way more comprehensive version of this system. And you're going to price it based on value, which essentially means like, Rather than saying, I'm going to work this many hours and this is my hourly rate, that's not how you want to price it. How you want to price it is based on value so that you can say, you know, here's the ROI that you will achieve and I'm going to price it based on that ROI, not on the number of hours that I'm going to work, right? And so there's a couple different case studies of companies that I've worked with, different systems that I've done. I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to focus on the specific shift that we're making. Rather than being in a race to the bottom where you're just competing with like people on Upwork or whoever, you know, can build the automation for the cheapest, like in the fastest way, you're focused on infrastructure, on systems, on the ability to implement different systems into a business using AI such that they are able to scale faster, further 
because there's these AI outcome focused infrastructure. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but the, the biggest thing here is you don't want to be a builder. You want to be a, you know, strategic person. You want to be a focus on strategy, on consulting and building, right? And so, sure, you're going to need to do a lot of building. You're going to need to learn how to build the systems in NADN, make.com, you know, cursor, whatever it is. But you're going to think like a strategist so that you can focus on what is the actual infrastructure that I'm building. You're doing the strategy well enough such that the infrastructure is valuable enough and you're, you know, have premium pricing. You're in a blue ocean, as they call it, where you're in a market of one. If you do this right, if you position yourself right, then it's not like you're competing with everyone else on the price and you're in a commoditized industry. No, you're in an ocean of one. You're only competing with yourself because your offer is unique. The value that you add is unique and you're seen as an expert, not just someone that can implement and build a system for them. So this is the fundamental shift. This is exactly what I teach people to do inside of a entrepreneur university. We focus on the business foundations. We have an entire module with a bunch of AI prompts to help you arrive at your offer at your market positioning, a bunch of prompts and frameworks for email psychology and copywriting so that you can actually, you know, send emails and get this offer in front of people and actually sell them. And then, you know, once you get them in the door, I teach you how to go from where you are now to then scaling and essentially uh, building trust and building that client relationship. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of people in this community who are doing the exact same thing. And so this is where the money is at in 2025 and 2026. You have to be more strategic. You have to think like an entrepreneur, not just like someone who's chucking AI single use case workflows at the wall and seeing who's going to pay for it. The, the people that are going to win are the ones that understand strategy, that understand business, and that can think like an entrepreneur. Because at the end of the day, AI doesn't AI is not a magic bullet. It's a better and more effective way to solve problems, but you still have to understand how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a founder, how to start a business, how to create an offer, you know, how to find market positioning, how to create campaigns, how to reach out to people in a way that actually resonates, in a way that actually sticks. And you need to, if you don't do that, you'll just be in the sea of other AI builders, people trying to learn ChatGPT and Make.com and Zapier and NADN and all of these tools, but you won't be able to differentiate yourself in any meaningful way. And so you'll be in a race to the bottom of whoever, you know, charges the cheapest is the one that's going to get all the clients. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was valuable to you. This is something I've been thinking a lot about these days, and I really want to educate you guys and I really want to share as deeply as possible how to actually make this transition. It's not an easy transition to make, but if you have the right frameworks, principles, tools, which is what I'm creating these videos on, you can make that shift from AI builder to someone who's strategically positioning themselves at the front of the AI, you know, tsunami that is coming that has already come and you're riding that wave such that you're ahead of the curve and you're seeing the trends, right? The trends is like, if you don't see the trends, you'll think that AI automation and AI building is still where it's at. But if you see the trends, you see that that's something that's becoming saturated really fast. And the ability to build AI infrastructure, do AI strategy is where things are heading. And if you can learn that skill, if you can learn how to do a deep audit of the client's business, work with the different stakeholders in their organization, provide them highly structured AI solutions for their business. This is where you will make millions of dollars in the next couple of years. And this is where you need to be focusing your time and attention, not on learning how to use any better than everyone else, because that's not a winning game. What game are you playing? Make sure that you choose